In the early 1900s, Carl Landsteiner did something very bold. He mixed his own blood with his colleagues to address an experimental question. Why is it that sometimes blood clots when mixed with others, but not all the time? So, he got samples of blood cells and blood serum from himself and apparently healthy men in his lab and looked for patterns. When it clotted, he marked it with a plus. And lo and behold, there were patterns. And he could assign each individual to one of three groups based on the reactions. These were labelled as A, B and C. Landsteiner himself falling into category C, which was later renamed as O. We now know why these patterns were observed. Different groups had different people which have different types of red blood cells and different antibodies that react towards different foreign red blood cells. This information has been imperative for developing safe blood transfusions and led Landsteiner to be awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1930. The discovery of the ABO blood group system is now considered one of the most important discoveries in the history of medicine. As I've been reading more about blood, its importance and links with longevity, along with the ABO blood system, it got me thinking, does blood group have an impact for health? Well, before we get to that, we first need to address what is the molecular underpinnings of the blood groups. Well, the ABO blood system is sugar-based. Attached to the lipid membrane of the red blood cells are different sugars. A blood type have so-called glycolipids, with the final sugar being N-acetylgaloctosamine. B blood groups have instead D-galactose, and type O blood have neither, just a shorter sugar chain. Although these differences are in sugars, the proteins responsible for making these sugar chains are encoded within our DNA sequence, which explains why we inherit our blood type. The gene codes for three main alleles, A, B, and you guessed it, O. A and B versions of the gene encode slightly different glycosyl transferases that are the enzymes responsible for adding either N-acetylgaloctosamine or for B, D-galactose. While the gene version for O blood types has a frame shift mutation which essentially means a non-functional enzyme is made, so neither sugar is added to the chain. Now, by sticking out of the surface of the cell, these glycolipids, these sugar chains attached to the cell membrane, are targets for antibodies. If a different type of blood cell is detected than expected, it triggers the immune response. Antibodies help our bodies to distinguish self from non-self, So people with O blood type possess antibodies against both A and B antigens. A against B antigens and B against A antigens. And if you are AB, so you possess both A glycolipids and B glycolipids, you have neither antibody. So if we now go back to that table I showed you at the start, then it becomes clear that Landsteiner had blood type O. When his blood cells were mixed with anyone else's, there was no agglutination. However, when his serum was added to blood of others, it could cause agglutination, except in the case where it seemed that the person was also blood type O. Now, it is at this point we should really give a round of applause to red blood cells. They may be small compared to other cell types, but they are mighty. By mighty, I mean there are many of them, an army of red blood cells marching around our vascular system within our bodies. This army includes 30 trillion red blood cells. In fact, around a quarter of all the human cells in our bodies are red blood cells, so we should for sure not underestimate their influence. Anyhow, it got me thinking, if there are differences in sugars attached to red blood cells, given how many there are within the body, would there be a fitness cost associated with being a specific blood type? Well, as usual, it turns out I was not the first to be curious by this question. Researchers have looked at both diseases and longevity. However, while I thought the association would be linked to the uses of sugar, the relationship is due to the structural changes of the sugar that impact molecular communications. Let's unpack. Firstly, let's consider infectious diseases. Typically, 
These diseases, like viruses, have to penetrate within a healthy cell. And to do that, they need some sort of molecular interaction. It could be a protein, or it could be a glycolipid. This recent article found an association with blood group A cells, showing them to be more likely to be infected with SARS-CoV-2 when compared with blood group O cells. While these findings provide one mechanism for how blood group A may directly influence the risk of infection with SARS-CoV-2, it does not mean that people with blood group O have no need to take precautions against infection. But while in this study it showed that being blood type O was protective against infection by SARS-CoV-2 and in other studies against severe malaria, it has been associated with infection with novovirus, Fibio cholerae and E. coli. So it seems like different viruses have found alternative solutions to invade different types of blood cell types. There has also been interesting connections between blood type and cancer. For example, O blood types have a lower hazard ratio to pancreatic cancer. From understanding how infectious agents work, it sort of made sense that there could be an association with infectivity. However, it is more surprising to see studies showing a link with cancer risk. However, it could be due to the impact of these blood type specific glycolipids on cell adhesion. Non O blood types have higher levels of von Willebrand factor, a factor which plays a role in hemostasis and blood clotting. And in corroboration with this is the fact that O blood groups also seem to have a lower risk compared to non O blood types of developing coronary artery disease. Now, age itself may be a contributor to the vulnerability of infectious diseases, cancer and cardiovascular disease. So is there a further correlation between the ABO blood groups and longevity? Well, this table here summarises data from studies that, that have addressed this exact question. They differ depending on participant location and demographics. Sometimes there is an association, but other times there isn't. And in conclusion, the issue of longevity is particularly challenging. According to the current knowledge, the biological explanation is seemingly multifactorial, being the result of several inherited, such as the ABO allele, and environmental factors that interplay to cope with the ageing process. Now, whether or not there is a benefit of being a certain blood group type, There is interest in inhibiting the enzymes that add the sugars to make A and B antigens to effectively turn all blood cells to O-type, since all you need to really do is remove a sugar. This is desirable as O-blood can be given universally. However, at least from a health perspective, it is unclear if being one type or another influences ageing at the moment. This is because it is ultimately unclear what these glycolipids do, and it's worth reinstating that the ABO system is not the only difference that distinguishes blood groups. Indeed, there are over 30 different substances now, both proteins and sugars, that seem to contribute to an individual's blood group. Plus, these ABO glycolipids are not just restricted to red blood cells, but they can also be found on other tissue types, such as sensory neurons, platelets, and the endothelia of the blood vessels. So, while this investigation does not appear to account for much, these genetic differences should not be simply overlooked. So, with that blood shell, I hope you've learned something in this video. Thank you to my Patreon supporters, and thank you for listening.